So finally, let us talk about intra-arterial thrombolysis in the posterior circulation. Now, unlike the anterior circulation, why is it that we do not have many randomized studies for the posterior circulation? It's purely because the results of conservative therapy is so poor that anything we do will only be beneficial to the patient. And thus, if we had to conclude, we would say that IVTPA given within 3 hours has a level 1 evidence that it benefits. Intraarterial prourokinase given within 6 hours, there is a level 1 evidence that it produces benefit. And uh, intraarterial therapy in posterior circulation strokes has got only a level 4 or level 5 evidence. Having said so much about IV, what are the problems of IV? One, there is no real documentation of an embolus. If it fails, one has to go and give intra-arterial thrombolysis, doubling the cost. The endpoint is much better monitored on intra-arterial because we see the lysis take place. But these things have changed with the advent of CT angio, CT perfusion and uh, MR perfusion imaging. There is also another group of hardware that is coming to the market, the retrieval devices like the Mercy device, the Penumbra device and the Catch. All of them do the same thing, they retrieve a clot early, again allowing us to extend the window period a little longer. This is a picture of a patient with the posterior circulation ischemia and this is the angio showing the thrombus in the basilar top and this is the end result after retrieving the thrombus and this is a device called CATCH which enables us to do it. Now when we talk about RTPA, uh, these are certain guidelines to be kept in our mind. One, if there is no CT changes, treat. The subtle CT changes of less or more than one third, still you can think of treating. When there is a definite CT change of less or more than one third, do not treat because these are cases who can have fatal hemorrhage. The aspect score is a good guideline to look at uh, the CT changes. It's divided into six points on the frontal, parietal and parietal occipital cortex at the level of the internal capsule and at the level of the uh, roof of the ventricle plus additional points are given for the insular cortex, the caudate lobe, the lentiform nucleus and um, when we add these together we get 10 and in case we have ischemic areas seen on CT we minus 1 and based on that we will notice that results can be predicted. So this is a study that uses the aspect score in the NINS RTP trial. So what we see over here is when the aspect score is between 8 to 10 the results are extremely good and when it's 0 to 2 the results are very very poor but also it's interesting to see that across these numbers RTPA has scored better than placebo. In triatal thrombolysis we'll just talk a little bit once again on the strategy and the technique. So we would do a clinical assessment within 10 minutes and we have a CT scan ready in 15 minutes. We always do an echo to ensure there is no large thrombus in the chambers of the heart. We start a DSA, inform the NSRS. If the DSA is normal, it's fine, it's abnormal, the NSRS starts intubating when we get the hardware ready. We study both carotid bifurcation. We look for the status of collaterals. We look at the capillary and venous phase. We rule out an aneurysm or an AVM. This shows what can happen when you see the bifurcation. This patient has got a loose thrombus in the bifurcation which could be dislodged during the procedure. We look at the baseline ACT, we put a 6 French sheet and then a 5 French guiding. It allows us to monitor intraarterial pressure simultaneously. We start an infusion of uh, saline with heparin with nimodipine in it to allow us to keep the catheters clot free and also allows dilatation of the intracranial vessels. We normally use a transient wire. We give a J-shape 
uh, to the tip so it doesn't enter the perforators and we use any of the microcatheters that are available for intracranial use and we always do the procedure under GA and under roadmap. So this is how it's done. We would have a catheter if necessary in the external carotid and then we would exchange that for a guiding cat. Then we will navigate the guiding cat into the internal carotid artery and then we would take a microcatheter and the J wire with a J-shaped tip and we will wedge the wire inside the thrombus or wedge the catheter inside the thrombus and then initiate thrombolytic therapy with urokinase. We would give 5,000 units of heparin as a bolus, 500 as an infusion, monitor ACP around uh, to keep it around 250, we give 2.5 lakhs units of urokinase in the first 15 minutes, followed by another 2.5 lakhs over the next 45 minutes, and then another 2.5 lakhs over the next one hour. After 45 minutes, we gently try to fragment the crot by injecting saline under high pressure continue the procedure for more than two hours unless there is significant lysis and uh, we know that this is working. We are very careful to look for sudden changes in the blood pressure. We'll do follow-up CT to look at the infarct size. We remove, uh, we also do a CT to ensure that there is no hemorrhage. We usually put an angio seal device at the puncture site and we control, continue to give heparin after ACT and uh, we give a loading dose of 300 milligrams of clopidogrel to all our patients. We said about intra-arterial and if you do not have a facility for DSA, do not lose heart. Today there are new uh, studies coming up where MR has been used to extend the window beyond three hours. This is one such study which uses MR to tell us how you can extend this study beyond the three hours window period. Look at the statistics. It tells you about a group of patients where they have studied less than 3 hours is 714, MRI less than 3 hours 316, MRI greater than 3 hours is 180 and you look at the pink numbers it will tell you the results of this group more than 3 hours. The age was 68.5, the NIH scale was 14 uh, and uh, the time for, for of thrombolysis from onset was 240 minutes that is about four hours uh, and then we find that they had uh, a very low mortality very similar compared to those before three hours and after three hours and favorable outcome was seen in 40 percent actually their statistics shows a better response to after three hours than before three hours so that's the end of this lecture which guides you to start a protocol based system in your hospital towards ensuring a strict stroke patients go home in a much better condition than what is available today with routine conventional therapy of heparin, aspirin and physiotherapy.